Hi, welcome to the 3D Pen Den. I have been promising for a while now to make a tutorial on making large spheres like this one. Okay, here it comes, the season finale of the sphere series. And if you stick around till the end of this video, I will give you some tips on displaying your ball and explain some of the math involved, as I have been promising. I have been spending a lot of time on making spheres lately. The sphere playlist is in the description. It is relatively easy to make a small size ball and if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, I suggest you review Spheres Part 1. The link is above and in the description. The problem is the turntable and the template we used up to now is good only for balls up to about 5 inches. So we will need some bigger equipment. Here is a bigger turntable and I have a video on how to make one. It makes perfect circles up to 18 inches. Here is a set of spacers I used for the smaller spheres. And we will use those again, but in addition, we will also need some larger pieces of wood. We will also need a larger pattern and some very careful planning. I'm going to make these circles one color coded layer at a time. I will make the white circle then lift it, make the yellow one, put on a couple of spacers to give me some height, attach the previous circle to it and repeat. The trick is to plan how high I need to lift each circle so the ball stays round. There are two ways to do this, the math way and the geometric way. Let's look at the geometric way first and leave the math way till later. I will start by making a cardboard pattern of the quarter of the largest circle. Keep both pieces. You will need them. Mark the points where the circles touch the pattern. Name them or color code them to keep track. Now I will construct a tangent to each one of those circles. By the way, tangent is a line that touches the circle in that one point. Make sure all the tangents are parallel to each other. And where the tangents meet the outside curve of your pattern, marks the distance of that particular circle from the equator of your sphere. Next, I will mark the difference between the neighboring circles, which gives me the distance between the layers. Now, to demonstrate what I mean, this is how high the green circle will be from the equator, like so. So this is the height of the spacer needed to attach the green circle to the white one that will be the middle of the sphere. This is the height of the blue circle from the equator, like so. The difference between the green and blue shows right here and this should be the height of the spacer separating the blue layer from the green one. Let's mark that on the pattern in blue and so on. Now, to demonstrate what I mean. If you lift the quarter of your sphere vertically, here is where your spacers appear. All you need to do now is to find the size of padding that fits your color-coded spacer height. At some point, you may have to go to bigger sticks. A 
and here is where the other side of your cardboard pattern comes in handy. Mark the circles on that part too and it will give you a curve checker to monitor the progress of your ball as you construct it, like so. Now we are ready to make the real thing. Make sure you connect each new circle to the center rod so you can keep the structure centered while you are building it. We can always get rid of some of those later.
We are halfway done with the first half. It's time to check the curve. Looks round to me. curve again. Looks close. For the middle circle, I will trace all the designs on this pattern in white. The denser grid will help to add stability to the whole structure. We will need only one equator circle. Before we completely attach this layer, it's a good idea to edit out all the unwanted braces while you can still get to them.
whole process for the second hemisphere minus the white layer. Time to join the hemispheres. Now, you can't really put a spacer this heavy onto a delicate structure of the bottom hemisphere. So you will have to support the top half with something that will help you place the top hemisphere at the right height to complete your ball. I'm using filament boxes here, but books also work well. You can't spin the turntable at this point, so make sure you can walk around the whole structure to get to all sides. promised math way of doing this. This equation comes to you courtesy of my math advisor Alex Kreitzberg. I personally prefer to plan my balls the geometric way as shown in this video, but if you are a STEM teacher, you may appreciate any sneaky way to make your students do some math while they are playing with their 3D pens. I will also put this in the description. One more tip, if you are going to display your sphere hanging, I strongly recommend leaving the wire inside, hanging the ball by that central point and possibly gluing two small beads on each end of the wire so it won't slip out. The ball of this size is way too heavy to hang by the plastic strands alone. They may break or deform. Here we are, all done! Now you can also start putting things inside your balls, but that would be another video. So subscribe, so you don't miss it!